G'day there folks, I'm Beanie and you're watching Beanie Draws. I've had a few people request that I do another Dilophosaurus video. So I figured I'm going to do a, I'm going to probably do two versions actually. I'm going to do one like the one that people keep asking me to um, do again in a non-timelapse version. That one will come later. But I thought I'd do a Dilophosaurus that's more scientifically accurate and for this just like I did with the dimo Dimorphodon, yeah I think Dimorphodon I am going to do two versions of the head the scientifically accurate version of the head and the Jurassic Park version I mean, you know, the differences between Jurassic Park and realistic science are very drastic and, you know, vast but it's an entertaining film, it doesn't have to be exactly accurate, and like Dr. Wu said in the latest Jurassic World, if if you wanted accuracy or whatever, it'd look completely different, but you didn't want realism, you wanted more teeth. So, although technically speaking, Dilophosaurus has quite huge teeth in real life compared to its tiny dog-sized counterpart, but all that aside, let's start drawing the Dilophosaurus, shall we? I figure how I'm going to do this is I'm going to do a quick little flow line which will give us the general shape of the body. You can't probably see it too easily right now, but it is there. Dilophosaurus, um, its body is more or less more or less the same as the skeleton of, you know, they see in books and the library and uh, museums and such. Uh, it's just basically the head and its size and the fact that it has a frill that are different. Um, so I, um, I may end up doing two versions of more or less the exact same body just with different heads, but um, I'm tempted to do the, the Jurassic Park version, but I'm going to have the Jurassic Park head there somewhere. See how this goes anyway. This is an unedited video, so could go anywhere. So we've got the spine, it's going to go through the body, uh, the hip will be about here, then the tail, the tail could actually be longer but it's not going to really fit in this screen or page really if we do that. What we'll do next is we'll, yeah, we don't leave a little mark like that. What I'm going to do, I'm so tempted to draw the Jurassic Park version. No, I'm going to keep to the the scientifically accurate version. I'm just going to rough in a shape for the head. So I'll do it like so. Rough in some rectangles for the jaw. Like so. And the tiny little crest. The um... I can I can sketch it in now really. The difference between the Jurassic Park version and the scientifically accurate version is the Jurassic Park version has more of a crest that's kinda of like big like that and it's got a little bit of a head like that. And the body itself is more or less the same. But we're going for more realism this time. So I'm just gonna reduce everything down a little bit. Um, the shoulders would be about here, so we'll draw a shoulder there. I'm basically doing the, the skeleton first. That's it. That's the skeleton is more or less a complex, complex, complex. My uh, English is brilliant. <laughs> it, we're doing a complex stick figure basically, so that would be the shoulder joint. And also, when you draw the skeletal bits, it gives you um room to work with like muscle shapes later on. Uh, the, f uh, the upper arm the upper, the arms themselves seem to be kind of small not um, Tyrannosaurus small but you know fairly small so there's the forearm and I'm gonna give it three fingers like that and then the hip would be about like here just draw a bit of a rough I suppose you could almost call it a really pudgy Velociraptor claw shape. 
and that would be for the uh, the hip and the hip connector. Um, I should probably draw it a little bit further back, but the balance is a little bit off. Maybe I'll bring the um, forward a little bit, so it's a little bit closer to the front end. Someone was saying that they were um, that they liked how I'm leaving these completely unedited, so you can see all the mistakes, etc., and the evolution, which I, you know, I agree. That's a different take for my videos. So I'm going to draw the the uh, shoulder blade in again. Draw in the arms again. So you got a little bit of it. The Dilophosaurus has a very long, narrow body. It looks like. So we'll do the thigh. So the thigh is probably about that length. And it has a bit of a... I've noticed that a lot of the dinosaurs have a, a big bit of bone on the shin like that. I don't know what that bit of bone would be called, but I'm calling it a bit of bone. Maybe, maybe it's a knee joint. The knee bone. So we'll take that down to about there, so that would be the ankle, and I'm going to have this Dilophosaurus kind of walking, so the foot will be kind of back here, and then we'll place in the other leg, about so, so that'd be the, th uh, the calf, no, not the calf, that's the calf, that's the thigh, then we do the calf like so draw like that you don't have to pay too much attention to the the bone because we'll be covering the bone in muscles and meat later then what we do is we do the ankle and bring the ankle down uh, to the foot like so, um, just, I'm, right now I'm evaluating what I've just drawn, and I think through my evaluations, I need to fix my foot a little bit, might bring its leg forward a little bit more, I actually like to leave these bits of, um, changing around, in my videos, because it kind of gives you an idea of that, you know, drawing, sometimes, it, you know, the whole point of having a razor and your pencil is that, you know, sometimes you'll want to adjust things, move things around. I wouldn't necessarily call them mistakes, I just call them adjustings. So there's the thigh piece again. I'm going to bring the leg down a little bit, so the Dilophosaurus looks a little bit taller. Because it... It, oh, it's not a tall dinosaur, it's only about the size of a human, I guess, but, um, it's not squished in, so it's not, like, completely narrow. So that would be the foot, bit of a stick figure thing going on to start off with. And then we'll put in some ribs from the skeleton that I'm looking at. It's just, like, an illustrator skeleton. The, um... Photos I've seen of the actual skeleton looks a little squiff and weird, so I'm just going with the animate the uh, animated. It's not animated. I'm going with the illustrated kind just to kind of gauge where I'm going to put things. So I'm going to put that shoulder a little bit thicker. So we've got a bit of a skeleton going on there. Um, the tail is definitely not going to fit. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm telling you now, because, um, yeah, tail should be, like, going right out to the, like, out to there. But, so be it. Unless we make the whole thing a little bit smaller, but I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to do a sort of an S bend for the neck spine. And... I mean that it, you can just. I like putting little quick little zigzags just to kind of indicate that that is actually a spine. I'm gonna make the spine along its the vertebrae along its back a bit more spiny. Just 
roughly. Then some um, the pelvic bone and another pelvic bone. I draw in the pelvic bones because they give me an idea where the stomach's going to be in the um, abdominal region. And then the tail will be erasing most of that stuff later. But that's more or less the stick figure part done. I'm going to just put in another arm just to, you know, for a bit of three dimensionalism. I'm going to switch to my other reference image I've got, which is the actual skull. And I think I'm going to start working on the skull now. So, I just typed in Dilophosaurus skeleton and like the basically the first illustrated picture of a skull is the image that I'm using. So just do a quick Google search and you'll have it. What I'm going to do now, this is going to... I was actually looking at my screen and that threw me off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is... For the skull, um, it seems that it has a bit of a long curved line up to about there, and it kind of sharply, let me see, does it sharply? Yeah, it doesn't always sharply, sometimes it curves in, sometimes it's a bit more of a sharp thing, sometimes it's curvy. Sometimes it has this bit at the back. Does it have that thing at the back? Yes, it does. So I'm using multiple reference images, and some of them actually have the spikes. Some of them don't. So I'm just going to put the spikes in just for the sake of it. Um, I'm going to put in the the um, the nostril lip bump. And once I <clears throat> once I start drawing in the Jurassic Park version, you'll kind of see why it's fairly different. Actually, maybe I should do a, just a, a video on the heads. I think I will do that, actually. I might do that after I've drawn this, but we'll see. So that's definitely going to be another video coming along. Um, it'll have a hole, like here, kind of a tear-shaped hole. That will be for the nostril. Actually, it's quite it's bigger than that. It's more like that and I mean there's a there's a bit of a crack structure in the, in the skull but we're not we're going to be putting skin over the top of it so we're not worried too much about that then there's a bit of a line there and then a eye socket thing there yeah see I definitely want to put more detail in the, into this head so that's definitely going to be the next video um the jaw, um, jaw, it's not the jaw, um, I don't even know what to call it, this part of the skull. I'll draw it and, you know, you can decide for yourself what, what it should be called. It's kind of like the inner lip mouth thing, technical terms. <laughs> Gonna draw a shape here for the inner of the, the, um, this big hole, I guess you'd call it the um, the snout nasal passage, and there's a little bit of a ear socket hole thing back there, and uh, this bit of the mouth curves down and then comes up to the end of the, the jaw, and then I'm gonna have the mouth open, so I'm gonna have the jaw, I'm going to draw the the front of the tip of the chin to give me an idea of the the uh, length that it hopefully should be. Draw the curve fairly fairly narrow, sort of muscular but narrow. I don't even know if that makes sense, but you can see it as I draw this kind of curved shape. And this is actually reminding me of the Dimorphodon drawing I just did recently, where it had a sort of a similar, I think it had a similar skull shape, did it? I can't remember now. Um, so we draw a sort of a thick, but not too thick jaw. And it goes like that. 
And then what we'll do, tr I'll try and make it so that um my f hands aren't covering the image. There's kind of like four big teeth, <laughs> which look tiny on this page. So yeah, definitely going to do this video again. Not this whole body, but um, I'm definitely going to do the head again. Because I'm in the mood for it. So after I've drawn this, I'm going to draw the head. And then I'm going to get back to Ubering. Just going to draw these big teeth. Um, the big difference between Dilophosaurus's, um, the Dilophosaurus in, uh, in real life and Jurassic Park is the Dilophosaurus in real life has much bigger teeth. I mean, really, the teeth itself makes it look terrifying, I think. So, like that. And then kind of do this. Hopefully you could see that. Hopefully I wasn't blocking you with my hand. Um, then we're going to draw some teeth here. kind of the same situation, four big teeth there, and then they get smaller and then bigger again. Make them a bit sparse. And I would assume that the eye would go, ah, uh, hopefully, I really hope I'm not blocking this with my hand. I'll do, like I said, I'll do a better, bigger video for the head only. But we'll draw, draw the eye. Because I wanted to get the whole body. I wanted to make it look like, you know, a full dinosaur. And speaking of, we more or less have everything ready to go for the body. So I'm going to go back to my reference image of the body. And I'm going to flesh it out a bit. And hopefully my hand isn't covering the image. So put some shoulders in there. going to put in... Leave the line for the... Um, the shoulder blade, but I might erase that part, May, uh, I'll erase it so it's a little bit lighter, and um, I'm gonna have the, make some muscle skin layer over the, um, over the spine, see how, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of a, a distance between where I drew the spine and then the top of the neck, that's because that would be like, you know, a bit of muscle, I guess, just to add a bit of thickness. Now, some images I see have it gi giving um, the Lophosaurus a thin neck, like so. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a bit of, uh, of a under throat sack. And give it a bit of a, a little bit of a more muscular neck. Not too muscular, just a little bit more muscular. Because it's quite a long neck. It probably would need a thicker muscle to keep the, you know, the skull uh, lifted. Or Yeah, my description isn't very good there. But, yeah. I think it would need a thicker neck just to, for the length and keeping the head up. So, there's going to connect the neck in with the shoulder with that curve. And then I'm going to draw in some arms, like so. And um, what I'm going to do, I think I might actually leave the hands for now. I'm going to do most of the body and then I'll do the feet last because I think I'm going to try see if I can do this without editing the video. Just bring in everything so you can see a bit closer detail. It just means it's going to be a very squeaky bit of the video when I'm adjusting my webcam. But what I'll do is I'll um, put in the thigh muscle. I think there'll be a th uh, muscle there. Connects the... Um, probably the knee to the hip bone, I guess. Actually, the, the hip bone's more out. Uh, actually, no, I drew I drew the hip bone a little further out than I needed to. So, doing it okay, actually. Gonna give it a, a bit of a thicker leg. 
erase some of these lines. Um, I'm gonna do the knee, a bit of a curve for the knee, and a calf muscle. Move it out to the ankle. Another calf, or not calf, this would be the shin. Bring that down. And it seems that most of the part of the leg down here is just, you know, more of a consistent thickness. Um, that would be the abdominals. Alright, <clears throat> now we're going to put in the torso. Connecting these bits of the rib to that bit of the pelvic bone. See, when I'm pausing, I'm trying to think of what the actual anatomical term would be. Because we are drawing anatomy. I'm going to draw in a line that indicates the shape of where the ribs would be. And then I'm going to erase... Oh no, I'm going to keep that line in for now. So I can do this part of the leg. Because I find it easier to draw even the bits that aren't going to be seen. I draw them in just so I can see where the rest of the placement of the leg should be. And then I worry about the rest later. So I'm going to do the feet later. But now I'm going to erase this part. And this part. And this, actually I'm going to raise that whole part, and I'll just refine it a little bit with some lines, muscle lines. Might give it some little curved muscle shapes. I'm just trying to think of what it, you know, it could look like. I'm going to give it a hip lump. And then that hip lump, I'm just going to pull the page over a little bit, will connect to the tail. Again, I didn't draw the tail um, the right length, so we're only going to draw a portion of the tail. And the reason why I use so many lines when trying to draw a tail is because I'm very crappy at drawing long consistent straight straight but slightly curved lines so I just do multiple little lines and I just kind of join them together till they make a thick line and then just kind of and I made a big line there and I just kind of erase that line down a little bit So that looks kind of tidy. And I'll do the same with this part of the tail. The tail is kind of, I don't know, I think the tail is looking a little bit off a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this part. And I might make that line just a little bit straighter. More like that. I think that's probably better. And curve that out. Like so. Good. Um, I won't worry too much about... I'll, I'll draw a muscle line here. And then a bit of a muscle line there. The muscle would keep all the tail bits together. Man, I have such great technical... Um, Descriptions, don't I? <laughs> Gonna erase these bits of vertebrae now because we don't need them. Um, and while I'm drawing this, I'm kind of thinking, what kind of pattern should I do for this Dilophosaurus? I'm thinking I might make the top of it solid black and then maybe make it a bit dotty. So I'm gonna just finish the back. that down into the hip. I am going to erase, oh, no, I'm going to place a line there, which would kind of be the indication of the shape of the rib. And then I'll just erase this part of the vertebrae. 
I'm going to erase the ribs for the most part and draw them very lightly so I'm not putting much pressure on the page at all and just for the record if you're wondering I'm using a 0.5 millimeter HB mechanical pencil I keep mentioning this all the time it doesn't really matter what you use I just you know I the reason why I'm actually using this pencil is because I have lost my other pencil it's gone somewhere um, so in one of my bags, I'll have to buy another one, and then maybe do another unboxing. Oh wait, no, I don't think I've actually released that video, because it's still in the editing process, and my computer isn't able to edit at the moment, so I'm just basically drawing this all as I go, and once it's done, I'm not editing it, I'm just slapping it straight onto my channel, and yeah, you get to see all the little mistakes and all the... The weirdness as that goes along. I'm erasing the bones inside now. I'm gonna put that bit of calf muscle. Maybe put some shape here, a bit of a curved line there for the knee. Um, right. Um, okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna erase that line because we won't need that. That's just part of the skull, which you won't really see. Um, I'm going to erase this part lightly because we're still going to have that part of the nasal hole, I guess. Nasal pouch or something like that. Just going to refine the nostril. That was me combining nose and nostril together to call it a nostril. Because, you know, I'm creative, I invent words. Just going to refine the crest a little bit. I'm going to... Oh, wait. There we go. Just going to give its crest a little bit of texture. So, some put, put some little light lines. Stroke, 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 stroke to give it a bit of a textured line. I'm going to go into a lot more detail in another video. So don't worry too much about the lack of detail in this one. If I remember to, I will link that video at some point so I think that's pretty good I'm just gonna actually erase that part of the jaw connecting to the top of the the um, head and make it a bit sharper and together so it doesn't look like it's, it's a skull it looks like a head refining some of my lines a little bit to make it a bit tidier also, considering this is like, you know, quite a lot of detail <laughs> in such a small uh, area. So I'm just going to put some little, I don't know, texture line shapes things there. Um, I suppose we should tackle these hands now. So, this is where I'm going to try and bring the camera in. So, bear with me for a moment. If you have, if you're listening to this with earphones, I recommend taking your earphones out right now. And once my hand is back on the screen that's when you can put your headphones back in or you know just skip to that part okay just get the focus back okay I think we're ready to tackle it oh I don't even know if my hands gonna be out of food <laughs> Let's see how this goes, because I, I, oh, you're getting a really zoomed up view of my hand there. This is what an unedited video is like. So I'm just going to do the elbow and wrist, and I think it's gone out of focus again. There we go. I think my camera sometimes just automatically goes out of focus for some weird reason, even though I don't have it set to autofocus. So I'm just going to taper out the wrist to the elbow and then I'm going to put in the wrist around there um, I can put in some lines like so for the finger how many fingers does it have the skeleton looks like it's showing four fingers oh, look at that I'm out of focus again annoying am I out of focus I think so I think it's the mechanics in my webcam trying to 
switch around because it's facing down. Anyway, we don't care about it. webcam text no bubble. We want to see a hand being made. So this is a claw that I'm drawing right now. You can draw another claw. Like so. Um, I think it's got a bit of a thumb claw. Around there. And I th uh, I'm just going to put a little very, very light line there. Then I'm going to connect the gibbet fingers. This is me concentrating on the drawing itself. And then, oh look at that, I've covered that line. Well, it's not so bad. That is a slight wrist wrinkle line. The reason why I drew that is, I, I'm going to, uh, oh, that's a big picture of my mole. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, this is my wrist. See those lines? When you fold your wrist in and stretch it out, those wrinkle lines are what I'm drawing here. Sometimes just drawing your wrinkle lines is also what, um, or fold lines. Fold and wrinkle lines are what give you some of your extra little bits of detail. So that's a little bit of a tip for you guys and girls. Uh, there's a bit of a muscle shape there. Ah, sorry about that, I just whacked the camera. I'm gonna erase these bits of lines, I can erase... Oh, so you can't actually see that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put in the wrist and forearm there. I'm going to give it more of a curved hand there, maybe. Um, claws. Another claw. And I'll maybe give it a claw there. This finger will be the thickest. And because the other fingers are kind of behind that finger, we're not going to see as much of them. This is a test of my eyesight and detail. So I'm going to do a very thin bit of line there. Like so. And that way, that way you get the side view of a hand without necessarily hiding all the fingers. You just have a slither of finger visible behind other fingers. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's kind of cool. If not, well, hey, I tried. And now I'm going to try to explain the feet. Um, so I'm just, what I'll do is I'll draw the, the two claws. Can draw a toe claw there, kind of like what I did with there. So one toe will be kind of thicker. Some padding on that toe, and then um, because that foot's folded down, you, you can see how it's folded. It'll be have some slight fold lines there. I'd say. I'm gonna put some. Finish the two there. I'm going to give it some little lines along here for the scales along its twos. Um, so yeah, just just give them like little wiggly circled zigzaggies. And just, now I'm, <laughs> I'm getting into the detail like I usually do. Just going to put in some little lines here and there. And then gonna put in a claw there because the foot's gonna be down here like so um, this is always a bit of a tricky one to explain I'm just gonna draw it and you can kind of see what I'm doing just I won't be time-lapsing this so you can kind of see what I'm doing there's a curve there so that curve is this part this part is that part, and I'll and um, I'll draw and oh yeah I'll draw another two 
for there. And then I will have this toe stretching out like so. I hope that's okay. I'll draw a little dew claw back there. There's I always find it difficult to explain this part of the feet because feet, just like hands, are very complex. Lots of moving parts and lots of folds. So that line is that line. That's a separation of the toes or the dividers of the toes. Then we have the toe scales, like so. That's my phone telling me it's on low battery. I should really plug my phone into the charger then. Okay. Thank you for the rude interruption, Mr. Phone. Okay. So there's the shin. I don't know how that foot looks. What do you think? I don't think. It, I've done better, but like I said, it's complicated sometimes. I'll have to pr I'll have to practice drawing feet as well. Because I'm not the best at drawing feet. All artists need something to practice, I, I guess. Okay, now, watch out for your ears, because I'm pulling back out again. Okay, okay. See if that's pull out a little bit further. This is me just adjust. Normally, all that would have been edited out, but because I'm not editing this video at all, it's just kind of straight from the camera to the YouTube's. It's just kind of as is. So I'm gonna erase this part of the neck. Well, not this part of the neck, just those lines of the spine. And now I think what I'm going to do is get some light shading. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a light shade under its rib cage, torso area. Now, right now, as I'm doing this, I'm finding that this pencil isn't the best for rendering and shading. Or maybe I just need to practice more with this particular pencil. I'm just gonna, and again, usually this I, w I would erase, um, not erase. Normally this I would edit or speed it up because, you know, it's a little bit of a time consuming process, but I'm not gonna edit it, so you can watch how I'm doing it. There's that little pocket right there is the arm being in the distance, being covered by this one and this arm and a bit of the torso, so the light would not be hitting as much of that area. Thus, I put it in shadow. I'm going to put some shading here for the neck muscle shape. I'm going to put in some shading under the jaw. A little bit of shading under this part of the neck muscle. Might give a light little bit of shading under this part of the neck, just to give a slightly bit of a curved vibe. Might do the same for around there. Around here I'm just going to do a sh very light shading under the that line to give it a bit of an indentation look. Going to shade it slightly, very slightly underneath the jaw. Very, very, very slightly. Just to give it that three-dimensional curve. Now I'm going to refine that part of the jaw for contrast. Darken it up a bit. Uh, we're getting there. I think this is getting close. Just gonna try and make my curves look like curves a bit. And trying to imagine my light source coming from the top down. Gonna have a bit of shading under here.
that's a, that's kind of an in a um a thigh pit i guess you could call it i'm actually just thinking now because um i had an uber passenger last night accidentally leave his car keys in my car so i'm actually while i'm just randomly shading i'm thinking how I've, I've sent a notification through uber to him i just yeah i wonder if and how how it's going to go about actually sending that back because that was you know when i found it i was already far away from his place so in the future here's a tip for, here's a tip for you guys if you and i'll explain this bit soon but here's a tip for you guys unrelated drawing but related to uber make sure you have your keys your wallet and your phone with you while you're on your way out don't close the door of the car whether it's a taxi or an uber or anything until you've made sure that you got your keys your wallet and everything else on you and then close the door just a little bit of a pointer completely unrelated to uber now these lines these are just fold lines that are i'm sort of see um i'm gonna make this shading a little bit darker much like i did there bit of shading down there and the reason why i was doing this very light lot um shading is just to give the ribs a little bit of a bumpy surface because like i'm just to give you an example, if this was like side, like, okay, if you cut ribs in half, they look like that. But because they're curvy, you have a little bit of a that going on with the skin. So what I'm doing is I'm shading in these middle parts to make the top part look like it's coming up and the bottom bit coming down and that hopefully should give the indication of ribs under skin and give us somewhat of a three dimensional vibe if that, hopefully that makes a bit of sense now I'm just going to raise that out I'm now going to shade in that part of the thigh, bit of a thigh there, I'm going to try and give it a bit of a curve, shape, uh, illusion, shape it down there because this is another curved shape. I'm trying to think of the, all these muscles as kind of tubes, cylinders. I mean, okay. Give you an idea. Look at my look at my um finger. Um, not the best example. Okay, see how the light is kind of there, and the shading is darkness down there. It's a bit of a tube shape. I'm doing the exact same thing with these muscles. Um, I'm going to use my finger just to blend it. Ooh, to blend it, but it's a bit messy. <laughs> Erase some of these bits. Actually, I think that guy's gonna have to check his email to even see that he's had a notification from Uber that lets him know that I found his keys. Just thinking out loud to myself. Okay, I'm gonna. Actually, I'm gonna make this part darker for contrast much like what I did with the jaw there just to make the bottom bit darker which means I'm going to make that line a little bit darker as well just to give it contrast and depth do the same there and then I'm just going to shade up around there for the tubular tail it's tubular dude that was lame. Um, I 
Hopefully my screen is getting too dark. Might have to bump up the exposure, I think, slightly. Mm. Yeah, that'll do. We're not after perfection. We're after teaching. So, darker down there. I'm gonna make that line darker for the contrast and just to bring things out a bit. And now, I think what I'm just going to do is just randomly put in little bits of splodgy shapes for a bit of texture and pattern, just to give it a little bit of a, you know, a bit of a pattern for the dinosaur. So I'm just putting in these little splodges. You don't have to, don't have to be particular. That's the beauty of patterns on animals. They're organic shapes, so it doesn't matter if it's precise or anything like that. I'm just going to do little dots because I think it would have probably dots around here. Could have a checkerboard shape for all we know. But I'm just going to put little dots. And I'm almost imagining a Dilophosaurus, because the way I'm doing it now, I'm almost imagining it to be kind of pale. Who knows? I'm just giving it, and this is also a paint job that's completely different to the um, Dilophosaurus in Jurassic Park. That's because I'm not drawing the Jurassic Park Dilophosaurus, I'm drawing a Beanie Draws Dilophosaurus. <laughs> I'm going to put in some splodges there. Actually, I'm just going to quickly bring up my reference images of the Dilophosaurus. Ah, so if you look at the different um, the different concept art um, paintings, it's got all different kinds of patterns that they went with. So I'm not exactly sure what is the. I'd have to I have to go back to the um. I think it's got like sort of wiggly shapes along there, but I'm not, uh, I'll leave that for another video. How about, in, make, make a comment in this video whether you wished that this one had have had the Jurassic Park styled colouring, or if you don't mind it being, you know, not Jurassic Park styled, just kind of, you know, it's, its own thing. I'm just going to put in some wiggles and shapes and things. And the reason why I'm putting little dots around here as, while putting in these shapes is because I just wanted to have a bit of a tonality to it. If any of you have rendered in pen, you'll probably, I don't know if you have, you know, done dot rendering with pen, but you, you know, the dots get a little bit sparser around, you know, where you want it to be lighter and they get closer together where you want it to be darker. So, make the tail dark, just because, why not? That's if you can even see the tail. No, you can't. But I think that's pretty good. And I think that's more or less done. A little bit rough. Not perfect. But it's close enough. I'll pro I might draw this again down the track, see how things go. Ah. Another line. I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit, but this is this is the not Jurassic Park way of drawing a Dilophosaurus, so hopefully you guys don't mind that. 
if you really want me to draw the Jurassic Park version of um, Dilophosaurus, I'm, I'm going to be doing the the, a diff, um, the head um, of the Dilophosaurus later. But if you want me to draw the body color, like color and render it exactly like the Jurassic Park version, leave me a comment, and I will work on that at some point as well. But yeah, if, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, give me a comment on what you thought, and what you'd like to see in the future. I think I've covered the, the um, Dimorphodon as well, so there's a, there's a, I know there's other requests that I've got that I'll get around to at some point, but I felt like drawing a Dilophosaurus today. Um, I mean, like, if you really want to do this Jurassic Park style, you just make these patches darker and then there's like a white patch through there and like white patches and dark patches but you know that's how to draw the shape how to kind of render it in my style anyway I'm just gonna put some little shapes there just to for the crest but yeah that's me drawing ah. Come on. Don't tilt. Stay there. Okay. That is me drawing Dilophosaurus. A more scientific way of it. So, that's me, Beanie, signing out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I think I'm now going to start working on the next video, which is going to be drawing the head. So, I will see you there. This is Beanie signing out, and I'll catch you next time. Cheerio for now.